good? We are here at Kenyatta Market and a couple of cool things mm -hmm. that you can find at Kenyatta Market. Yeah. Someone to do your hair, someone to make you some really good meat and you can get an opportunity to take a trip down memory lane musically. Exactly. And I'll be speaking to Aniko and Blaze about the past and the future of Kenyan music. And I am going to be talking to the now of Kenyan music, uh -huh. Steph Capella, such a good rapper, dope, singer. Yeah. So I'm going to be catching up with him. He's at a record shop at the corner. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk music. Awesome. And when you're done, you and I will be heading to the Ideal Wellness Bar to get our hair did mm -hmm. and speak about all things natural hair. Fancy. I like it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So um, you're going to get started and we'll meet up towards the end. For sure. Cool. All right. Bye. Ladies love him and his versatility as a rapper and singer has put him on the radar as one of Kenya's top entertainers. Steph Capella. Uh, what up, bro? What up, my G? <laughs> How you doing, man? It's good. Chilling, chilling. You are a hard person to find. Really? <laughs> yes, really. And th uh -huh. see, this is literally one of the many things that I find interesting about you. Like, mm. a, lot of, a lot of the local artists that we interacted with, right. they're all over the place. You right. know, you see them right. in interviews, you see them on the gram here and there. Right. The only time I see you is when you're dropping a fire track, mm -hmm. if you've got a gig here mm -hmm. or you've got a TV interview. Do you do that right. deliberately? Uh, I mean, I'm a low-key guy. Uh, I just, I think I like, I like my alone time a little bit mm -hmm. more than most. So, like, I'm always chilling or I'm just doing something behind the scenes. Usually Usually in studio, usually working on a song. <laughs> Check out this mm -hmm. place though. Yeah, yeah, man. Time traveling, time mm -hmm. traveling, man. I'm telling you, like, there's such a huge collection here, man. I tell you, man. It's Wazimu. When it comes to yeah. LPs, like, I'm pretty sure you had a couple of them, like, in your parents' house growing up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know if we had like a collection. My mom was a staunch Christian. Because you know, I've, even in your tracks, you do, right. you do English, but you mm -hmm. also throw in Shang, Swa, right. and that. Right. Is it, is it just a, is it a natural thing for you, or do mm -hmm. you feel like a little bit of pressure um, from the, just the general industry um, to, to kind of craft? It's a good question. Like it's a good question. I think it's a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. If I'm being honest, I think yeah. it's a little bit of both. When I was in the States, um, I, I was doing like music in Swahili mm -hmm. for a little bit and then I, I discovered like the Kenyans abroad didn't really care for like, like they didn't for want us, that. you know, as much that the artists who were there, like at that point we couldn't struggle, yeah. like, so I decided if I'm going to do this thing, let me, I'm just going to do it in English. I'm in the States after all, yeah. and I'm trying to be a global superstar. Exactly. I might as well just go ahead and start doing this music in English. I don't get it anymore I could have sworn we had a real thing Should have told me how you really felt before We on the phone cause you I'm alone He always leaving and you never get Like after doing that for a while You come to discover that people are not looking for something they already have mm -hmm. They're looking for something new Like they're looking for that novelty of having like an accent Or yeah. having like a, like the way you sing your songs So it started changing there, but when I got back, that's when I was really like, okay, I need, I need to put more Swahili in my songs, I need to put more Shang in my... Because I want to relate with my people. At the end of the day, music isn't for me. Like, what I'm doing is not for me, it's for, it's for the fans. It's making so, it for the fans. Yeah. And also, speaking about making it for the fans, because mm. I, I remember running into this... Um, I came across this video of you, um, you did... Uh, you did this uh, cover, well, it wasn't really a cover version. Uh, mm. The the Burner Boy, ah, on the low, low, and then on the you low, got yeah. into rapping, into singing, yeah, and I was like, yeah, yo, yeah, I yeah. know the ladies dig it. Every time I'm thinking that I got you, Una Nino Disha Mara Tattoo, Una Taganini, me, I want you, Una Taganini, and I got you. Give me one chance, give me one dance, baby. One what about the hardcore capella fans, the dudes were like, yo. And that's why that's why I got exposure for. I like that you mentioned exposure, cause mm. yo, man, that was a fire record right yeah. there. Uh, first off, don't be talking about the culture. Money talks, don't be talking about exposure. Gang wop, fire and record right yeah. there, yeah. bro. Like the response, the response. Mm -hmm. How 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 was it for you? We didn't expect exposure to do well. Uh, we we actually didn't shoot it with the. With the, the with the intention, the intention was not to have it become yeah. the massive jam. No, was. no, it wasn't. And after we're done with it, we kind of like shelved it for a second, oh, and yeah. then um, we just decided, okay, why why don't we just do a lyric video with the footage? Didn't expect that, but 
that's just the music industry. The things that you think are gonna do so well, mm -hmm. sometimes they. What are you doing with that exposure? Um, I'm currently working on my album, so so we're trying to make sure that when it does come out, it comes out with the kind of impact that we are hoping for. So right now we're just laying the groundwork. The album itself is done. Mm -hmm. As far as like recording, mixing, whatever, that's done. Now we're just laying the foundation and making sure. It's yeah. about to be, it's about to be uh, capella it's be season. Litty, litty, yeah. litty. Yeah. Speaking on vision, um, mm -hmm. I was checking out these turntables and I'm mm -hmm. just I'm curious about something. Mm -hmm. um, do, you, uh, do you subscribe to the, I'm the MC, I come through, I've got my guy, the mm -hmm. DJ doing the, you know, mm -hmm. the mixing, no playback, we just go. No. No? <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, I, do, I always have a DJ. Shout out to Kill Switch if he's listening. Um, I always have a DJ, but he's always, like, it depends. It depends on what kind of event we have. Yeah. Um, if it's like a concert type gig, then we'll have like a, we have a band and maybe a few backing tracks here and there. You know, the thing about a live band is you can always, you can always customize the performance even on stage at that moment. It's a couple of the places you mm -hmm. perform, like let's, let's compare performing in, um, like in Kenya to outside of it. Right, mm -hmm. right. What's, what's the difference for you in terms of uh, feedback from the audience? Um, well, for me, it's, for me, it's a little bit different. Um, when I was performing in the States, um, for a while it was hard. For a while it was hard. And, and you have to look at it like I was an outsider. You know, yeah. I'm, the, I'm the African guy, right? And token then you're, African. Yeah, you're the token African guy. And here are all these other rappers and whatever. So they, they kind of want to sideline you already before mm. you even do anything. And it, it just kind of builds a resilience in you, so you, you just keep grinding it out until like they start appreciating it. Some have gone this way, that way, but like for the most part, I appreciate it, man. The fans are for real, like they're mm -hmm. for real. If they're feeling you, they'll show you they're feeling you. Loving that old school vibe. By mm -hmm. the way, speaking mm -hmm. of old school, we must give props to where we're at. Jimmy, I love this entire setup. Mm -hmm. This is this is a great time vault. Could you just like Tell me something about, because I, I know LPs, I know an LP player, a record player. I know it ideally looks like all of these, but all these look so different. Is this like the oldest one? That's the pre vinyl And then you've been collecting this for, for all these years. What, what was the inspiration behind all of this? Well, I didn't want to do what everybody was doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's something different. You've been in the newspapers, magazines. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they remember, it's only here. North of Johannesburg and south of Cairo. Yeah. It's, it's done only this, this is the that. only this is the only shop that exists like wow. Yeah, right? And uh, among us the 18 mm. best record shops in the world. Wow. Mm. Amen. This is just that. a passion. It's just a passion, yes. I get it. This is a very cool setup, man. I love what you're doing. Steph Capella, my yes, G. Bro. It's been real. Mm -hmm. I know it's going to be Capella season, so I'm looking forward to that. Oh, man. Believe it. Mm -hmm. Believe it. We're taking over. And I love that we, had to, we took a great history class together. I know. This right? one right here, I'll remember for days. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go catch up with my peeps. All right, it was man. nice. You take care, man. Cheers. Good to see you, man. One of the most respected names in the Kenyan media industry with more than 20 years of experience in artist development. Aniko Owoko has carved out a name for herself as one of Africa's most respected PR mavens working with Africa's top international artists. All right, so uh, Blaze, Aniko, man, so good to be here with you guys. I remember covering events together. We have like around the same years in the media, yeah. 10, 11. Mm -hmm. Blaze, I remember coming and seeing you founding things. Yes. What we... Creative art, bringing young people together. You know, um, Slum Africa, all those things. So much respect for that. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. No, I'm happy to be here because, um, you know, we've been in the industry long enough to have a conversation that is real and rich. And this is exactly what this conversation is. I mean, for someone like you who has developed and managed talent, for someone like you who supports them and goes like, hey, I'm working with you or you're ready for this. Yeah. So let's look at the past and the future, right? We are definitely in a new frontier, uh, new genres, new people with different sounds and the like. And how do you then get someone, Aniko, 
to understand you have to have structure listen I'm your publicist you're under my agency and this is what I'll do for you and they're like listen I am the artist here yeah. how do you get them to have that kind of respect yeah. and you know just craftsmanship without um, I mean for me I'm just gonna be honest with them I'll be honest with you and sometimes they don't like that especially when they feel like I'm paying you to do this job and you should do it now the way I'm telling you to do it because you can imagine even if you're a huge star in East Africa maybe nobody knows you in America like I just came from um, Nigeria and I actually interviewed Fouls this is Nigeria look how I'm living up Look how I'm living up. And you know, P. Diddy posting it and him ending up meeting P. Diddy and everything was just uh, from the social media and he never anticipated this, like he never thought he would ever meet um, P. Diddy. And I was like, so did he actually invite you? And he's like, no, like I just hit him up on the DM and I was like, I saw you posted my thing and I would love to meet you. And he's like, okay, when you come to America, let me know. And he was actually supposed to go to America to perform um, at a wedding. He's like, I'm coming like next month. And he literally was like, I text him and said, I just landed in America. And so um, he said, um, so where do I come? He's like, LA. And he took the next flight to LA and landed and was like, so what's the location? <laughs> and so he was just like, I shot my shot. You know, I just took yeah. the dream. You know. the yeah. And uh, when you look abroad in the international spectrum, who can you say is an African artist, even Kenyan generally, you know, who is out there and you can say, wow, this is an inspiration even for people like us, you know, like you guys who do management, PR and the like. Well, I would say, you know, for me, Burner Boy, definitely his career has been quite, you know, inspiring, you know, seeing him go from an artist that was just kind of, you know, coming up in Nigeria and then finding his sound. It's really yeah. just about finding your pocket. He found his pocket and it's done wonders for him. Nico, your, your artist or artists for that matter. This is a really hard question. I mean, I'm going to start with Kenya, definitely Saudi Soul. She's a heartbreaker, she bend up a backbreaker, steaming up what a they have always been my favorite. You know, I love Kalika. Because he's uh, defiant and he's, uh, he, he, he's always had his eye on the prize. You know, I met him like 10 years ago and he was nobody, but <laughs> he still had the attitude and he was like, I'm going to get there and look at where he is today. So I appreciate that. I appreciate Blinky Bill. He came from just a band and now he's doing his own global thing. I appreciate Madoni, the drama queen and she's also had different phases of um, kind of showing her different different sides of herself as an artist when she's also like a businesswoman. You see what she's done with the festivals. Look at where she is um, in Tanzania. I really love Vanessa Day. You know, she's super cool. I think she's just the perfect brand for anybody and she's also a great singer. In Uganda, I really love Billy okay. Gantz. I'm going to have to that. That is the future. That's the future of okay. East African dance or music. He's super dope. He just released like, his first album mm -hmm. recently. And I love Nadia Nakai from South Africa. You know, she's, um, she's a really great rapper and um, I, I think um, women are always kind of sidelined when it comes to many industries, not just entertainment. But she I cannot think. touch ecstatic though. She can't touch. <laughs> Cause I ain't moving backwards, fall back cause you in class and all that you do it after, come back a different chapter. Like I can't pick yeah. one, there's always an artist who well, yeah. inspires me for, for a different reason. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I understand yeah. that. So in the heart of everything we're speaking about, we have some young dope artists, you know, and the other, on the other side recording a video right now. So I want us all to go and check them out because you are the sayers of this. Whether they're ready, they have the X Factor, so we might as well Take okay. a walk and check them out. Check them out. <laughs> right. Can we wait, wait, wait for you to see these guys? Too dope. Not wait to see them. Hey guys, come through. How y'all doing? Nico. And Nico Blaze. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, and Nico Blaze, according to what you guys heard when they were there, what did you guys think? Loving it. Uh huh. For me, when I first had them, I was just like, why don't I know this music? I need to be bopping to this music. Uh, no, I swear, I swear. Okay. And, we and actually, also... We use that word, bop. We call ourselves bop stars. So it's it's funny you said that. No, we actually got it correct. Yeah. See, I got it. it. Hey. See, I got it. Uh -huh. It's really dope. I see the confidence and I like it. And it makes me want to hear more. Do you want to see more like you? Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having 
music. So much appreciated and definitely we need people who can, you know, look out for artists and say, you know, you have this is what you need to do, this is how you need to propel yourself. So I love it. Blaze and you for having us. Bless. Thanks. That's it from us here at uh, What's Good Africa and right here from Power254. And there's a whole lot coming, so stay tuned. Yvette Momani and Erika Gashoka are up and coming hair icons in Kenya. Natural hair culture has so much history, controversy, and finally a front row seat in contemporary fashion. Right, so Nick, I'm so excited about today. What about you? Ah, uh, I am amazed. I haven't been to a spa like ever. Yvette, Erica, thank you so much for being here. And I must say your natural crowns are beautiful. Yes, I'm happy that you actually came today. And um, Caroline, thank you for allowing us to even shoot you while you're doing your hair. And Nick, you're gonna be doing your hairdo and getting your cut today. So. Oh, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit scared because I haven't, I haven't had another barber touch my head in yeah. six years. I know. So I, I, I hope that I'll have a good excuse to give <laughs> them and be like, you know, I'm sorry, but you know, good done. Just this one time, just this one time. I'm yeah. sure he'll understand it. You know, you just, you're still loyal, I'm sure. Absolutely. For sure. So um, while I was working on mainstream TV um, and, and I was a news anchor, one of the things that we were not really allowed to do was have our natural hair out. In so, Kenya? That was in just Kenya. Just right here, of course, in, in Kenya. And I was so gutted. You know, so I love having it. But the reactions of the people around you make it very hard for you to want to wear your own hair. Yeah. So, um, ladies, I'll begin with you, Erica. Your story is not the classical, you know, natural hair. You know, you don't comp it out like us. You know, yeah. you've had your locks since you were a child. So, yeah. I want to know about your experience around that. My whole life, I've had dreadlocks, and I've grown up with a mother who's had dreadlocks as well. What? So, <laughs> so I just used to go to school and see people in different hairstyles, and I'm just like, okay, you've chosen for that to be your hair. I've chosen for this to be my hair. Because when you were a kid, was that the instances where people would be like tagging on you? Yeah. And I remember telling my mom, I'm like, mom, how come, how come I don't look like this? Yeah. Or how come my hair doesn't look like this? And can I look like this? And I go to school and see all the girls with their relaxed hair and their perfect edges. And, and she's like, you know what? One day you're gonna, one day you're gonna thank me and one day you're gonna understand why it is that I, and that I kept your hair like that. Yeah, so that's why I started um, this platform called Rooted to normalize it. So if there are any kids who feel like they're alone, they know that they're not alone. Do you feel attached to your hair? Very. Because I do too, and I think it's the process of doing my own hair, mm -hmm. is that just taking the time to be like, to do each dread, I feel like these are my babies. <laughs> yeah, so anytime somebody tries to touch it or- It's like, ooh, it's swear. like, okay. Hey. <laughs> just being polite, but. <laughs> I'm all right, bro. Well, I'm not, but you know, ah, let's do it, let's get it over with. It's not, it's not a, a scared thing, it's more of a, it's a loyalty thing. You know this, you know this. Like me, I, I, I've literally had the same guy for years. So, ah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, we need to have a moment to pray for Nick. How are you doing so far? Uh, so far, so good. I uh, <laughs> learn something new every day. <laughs> I'm curious, uh -huh. how many people do you actually think know all it takes to maintain natural hair? Well, Nick, the Shengto guys went out the streets of Nairobi to get the opinion of different people on natural hair. Let's check it out. Wagwan, good family, Jeshia Shengto. Zina Pani Charles Lim. Wana Gishuru Wing. And today, to decide to hit the streets. Hey, to get some opinions on the natural hair. Let's hear what people have to say about it. When you hear natural hair, what comes to your mind? Nyole tu nyole natural tu nyole. Your own hair. Aha, inde wana hitaga aje kwa streets. This is Afro. Uh -huh. Yeah, Afro too. Hitaga tu fed up I'm done. I think they're called locks. Mm. I think that is the proper term. Uh -huh. so, yeah. Hey, yako ya natural hair. Ume keep your hair for how long if it? Uh, for years. This is the third year. Ukijana ina ingia, fed bia ina ingia, unanipata? Aha. Yeah. 
and what made you come watcha tu nisinyoe nisishukue ni uweke tu afro I think just being African, the culture and all that, as in I just love the vibe of being African. Yeah. Maybe which stereotypes you may face now, you may have to say what you stereotypes. You may have to say what you may have to say. Personally, I don't have to encounter any negativity. I don't have to say that you 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 have to say that. So, you have to say that you have to say that. I am not my hair. What you do for your dreads is that you have to say that. Shaka Dread umekuwa umeingia to another gang. Alafu bado kuna ma stories huko huko hapa nje kuna people who sell their hair. Eh kaona za sell your hair. Sisi sema ndani za za nyole yangu. Naona juice jap sijep guess habia kunyoa. Siwezi. Ah miku zangu itakuwa tricky. Zia a tip from say maybe another you start that natural hair journey ku grow my locks. Ni wacha tu nyole man don't give up. So man slim. What's your take from his own conversation? Manze me kuwa such an enlightening interview. Manze ni me learn that lazy moment in cleanliness. We will start journey ako ya natural hair. Hey, John, there's some stereotypes. There's all these natural hair out there. Kuna zi chant down. I'll see you. Hey, John, I me kuwa ni jeshi ya sheng talk. Aha, bon nagishuru wing. Jina bani Charles Lim. Until next time. Ra. I really like what that guy said. Yeah. I am not my hair. Yo, more power to you, my brother. Exactly, and I love the lady with the afro. I mean, African hair is so beautiful and versatile. I love the fact that as much as the times are progressing, African culture doesn't dissolve, it just evolves. Exactly, as it should be. And you know what? We saw that in everyone today. So we'll see you guys next time and stay tuned.